Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again speeding up speedy entry. Now, once you have notes and rests in your score, it's fairly simple within speedy entry to make some modifications. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to show you how to move, add, delete, and hide notes and rests. We're going to modify some ties, edit accidentals and enharmonics, and uh, look at stems and beams as well. And we can do that all within speedy entry. And if you know the keystrokes, it'll be... Uh, It'll be handy to learn all this stuff, all right? So let's start with moving a note that already exists. So I've got this C, and let's say I want to move it to an E. Instead of deleting it and re-entering an E, all we need to do is simply move the note with your mouse. Just grab a hold very carefully to the center of the note and move it up, and we can change it to an E. We can change it, we can move it down, and we can also move it left or right, by the way, left or right. Um, depending on if you have some uh, spacing issues and you need to adjust something manually, you can do it that way as well. All right. Now, one thing to note about this is that um, when you're moving a note, if you hold shift uh, and then grab a hold of the note, the drag will be constrained to the direction of your first move. So in this case, I moved upwards first, and now the drag is constrained vertical. If I were to try to move left or right, it won't move the note left or right, right, because it's constraining the drag. Similarly, if I hold shift and my first move is right, it will constrain the drag to the horizontal and won't let me move the note up or down. All right, so that's handy to know. And all of this will work the same with rests. You can grab a hold of the rest and move it around as you need to and shift up and down will move it, will constrain it, and then shift left or right will also constrain it. All right, so that's moving uh, notes and rests. In one of the previous videos, I, I talked about the floating rest, and uh, in this instance, I've got this floating eighth note rest here. So just to just to um, to uh, to recap that, if you use the asterisk key uh, while you're um, hovering over that rhythm, it will toggle that between its r floating position and its default position. Floating position, default position. Now, if you want that rest somewhere other than one of those positions, you can also move that rest the same way I just showed you. But just be aware that when you first click on it, it will restore to default position first and then move, all right? Which is fine, you just have to know that that happens. And then you can move it to a, a location somewhere in between. And once it's moved like that, if you hit the asterisk key again, it will restore to its floating position and then one more time to its default position, all right? So that's how uh, moving that rest uh, in, in layers will, will, will work, okay? We can also hide notes and rests right from, spe from speedy entry if we're in a measure if we use the h key that will hide and the h key again will reshow it and the o key also works so there's actually two different uh, shortcuts for this h and o all right and uh, in the second measure i have a practical use for this you see i've got this uh, cross staff beamed here and in the left hand that that half rest is getting in the way so all we have to do is enter this the uh, left hand you can see my half rest there and then press h to hide it and you're good to go, all right? Um, so let's talk about chords. Now, if you're using a MIDI keyboard, it's very simple to enter chords in Finale. You can just hold down the chord and then press the rhythm. But if you're not using a MIDI keyboard, we have that unchecked, then all of a sudden you, you, know, you can only add one note at a time. So how would we add a note here to make a chord? Fairly easily, use the Enter key. Just make sure that your crosshair is on the right place and use the Enter key. On a Mac laptop, by the way, uh, enter is function return, so that would also work. And um, to get rid of that note, if we only want to delete one note within that chord, make sure that your crosshair is hovered over that specific pitch and hit clear or shift delete. All right. So enter or function return on a Mac laptop. We'll add it, clear, or shift delete will and we'll delete that single note. Now, if you are not hovered over a specific pitch, like right now I'm, I'm well below it, and I hit the clear or shift delete key, you'll see that it turns the whole chord into a rest. So again, just be aware when you're doing this of where exactly your, your cursor is, all right? Um, let's talk about ties, shall we? Uh, in, f in speedy entry, it's fairly easy to flip ties from one direction to another. Now. Uh, the finale will set them by default according to certain parameters, but if we don't like that, Control F, I'm sorry, Command F, will flip it. All right, and um, in a p in a chord, 
in order to flip a single tie, we do need to have the cursor hovered over the specific pitch. So if we want to flip just this F, we have to be hovered over the F. If we want to flip the D, hover over the D. If we did not do that, if we were hovered somewhere else, above or below or in the middle of the chord that's not on a, the, a pitch that's within the chord, and hit that key combination, it will flip all of the ties at once. All right. Um, so both options are handy at times. You just need to know, um, you need to be aware of of um, of doing that. All right. Um, now in finale, the the setting for ties is set in such a manner that this particular chord with these these seconds like this will will look like this by default. Um, I just want to show you real quick because there is a way to fix that uh, globally, and I think this is, is, is worth showing you. So if you go into Document Options and find Ties, which is near the bottom, you have these uh, options in the sort of in the center here called Direction, and specifically Chords, and it's set to by default to do Stem Reversal. I think it's better to have Split Evenly and, un and Opposing Seconds Unchecked. So if we hit Apply, you'll see that that chord now looks a little bit better, all right? Um, so that's just a personal preference. I, I think it'll it'll uh, solve you some headaches trying to uh, clean up uh, tie messes like that in in piano parts. Okay. Um, so let's talk about chromatic alterations next. So as we know from the one of the previous lessons, we can change a, a, a note. Uh, we can raise or lower a pitch of a note using plus or minus, right? Or F S N X and V, right, to get all of those uh, accidentals. Um, but there's a few tricks to this that I think is, is useful to know. So the one thing is that, you know, if you press plus here, you get a sharp, and but you'll notice that the second note is an F natural. And so in order to get F sharps through this whole bar, we'd have to do, we'd have to do that three times, right? Except that we don't. If we ha can hover over the F and press option plus, now it changed all of those Fs to a sharp, right? Again, if we option minus, they're all natural, all right? And if we're not, oops, sorry, let me just show you that again. If we're not hovered over the F, if we're hovered somewhere else um, in, the, in the bar, uh, somewhere, uh, if we're hovered some other pitch in that first uh, rhythmic position, press option plus, it will change all of the notes in the measure to sharps, right? Option minus will do the opposite. All right, so the the option uh, uh, the option plus and minus is 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 what's doing that. It will not work with S N F X uh, V uh, key combinations. Just the plus and minus. All right. Same thing with chords. If I if I'm in this measure and I want to raise just a single pitch of this chord, I have to make sure that my crosshairs are hovering over. A, the, p the pitch that I want to raise or lower. So I've got this over the G now, and I press plus, and it only changes the G. If I were to hover below it or above it and press plus, it'll change the whole chord. Let me get out of here so you can see that. All right, and again, minus will change the whole chord. And similarly, if we hold option plus, we can change the, we can sharpen the entire measure, all the chords and, and everything. Same with option minus. All right, and then same thing, obviously, if you're hovering over a note and option plus, it'll change all of the Gs in that measure to flat, sharp, or whatever. All right, and you can do the same with the D. All right, so uh, get used to how that option key functions with the plus and minus uh, for accidentals. It, it's, uh, it can be very handy and, uh, and useful for you at times, all right? And in the second bar, in the, th the second bar here, you notice that I've got this all screwed up, and uh, you know this is a typical finale thing based on the spelling tables in the key of C major. You get an F sharp, an A flat, and and a B flat. But in this case, we'd probably want these all to be uh, G flat. So well, the next thing I'm going to show you is um, N harmonics, right? So plus and minus will um, will change a note up or down. But what if we want the F sharp to be a G flat? The key command for that is nine. And now all of a sudden that's a G flat, as you can see. And similarly to changing accidentals, option will again change all the accidentals in the measure on that pitch that you've, you're hovering over, right? If I'm not hovering over that pitch specifically and I do option nine, it will only change that one pitch, but option nine will change all of them in the measure. And with chords, 
There's an interesting thing. If you hover over the specific pitch and press 9, it will change it as you want. However, if you're not hovered over, Finale will do something interesting. It will cycle through all possibilities of uh, enharmonics for that chord, right? So you can keep going until you get the the uh, the layout that you want, in this case, the G flat chord, right? Again, so that's just the difference between hovering over it and pressing 9 for enharmonic and not hovering over a specific pitch for that, okay? Uh, so that is enharmonics. Um, how about courtesy accidentals? Now, in this next measure, I have a, a G, A chord, and a G chord, and then the following measure, I've got the C. Now, in a lot of instances, you're going to want to have a natural, C, a natural sign for that C as a courtesy, right? Um, it's very easy to do that. Just go into the measure with speedy entry, and it doesn't matter where you are now. If you hit the asterisk key, you will get a courtesy natural. And uh, it doesn't matter what that... Uh, um, it doesn't matter what pitch that is. For example, if we go back to this bar, you know, the, the G here we know is natu is flat just because of the rules of music. But if we hit the asterisk key, we can redisplay it if we want. All right. So the asterisk is basically sh showing the accidental regardless of whether it should or not. All right. That's basically the function of that. Um, and also, if we don't use the asterisk, if we use the P key, um, we will get the courtesy accidental with the parentheses around it. All right, and if we press P again, it will cycle back to a courtesy without the the uh, uh, parentheses, and again we can just cycle back and forth. And if we want we want it to disappear, press the uh, asterisk key one more time to get let it go away. All right, so that's uh, the asterisk and the P key. Okay, a couple more things I want to show you before we end here. Um, we can change beaming in Finale right from within the Speedy Entry tool. And there's a couple of shortcuts for that. If we go into this bar, let's say this this figure here, we want it to be uh, three three beamed eighth notes, three beamed eighth notes, two beamed eighth notes, right? Um, if you hover over a note and press the slash key, it will unhook the beam from the previous one, right? And it, it will also hook the beam. So basically, what you're doing is toggling the 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 note previous to the to the note that you're hovering over to be beamed right so we can do any combination of beaming this way um, with the slash key all right and we can do the same thing here so we want to set up that same thing so unbeam that one beam that one um, and unbeam that one and we're good to go all right so that's beaming uh, there is one more shortcut within for for beaming within um, speedy entry and that is the Backwards slash will give us flat beams. Now you notice these beams have a slight angle to them, but if I hit the backward slash, it will flatten them for you if that's what you want to see. And again, hit it again and it will undo that. And if you don't use backward slash, you could use shift M. We'll do the same thing. Shift M. All right. And again, it will toggle that on and off. And by the way, it doesn't matter which, um, which beam you're hovered over. It will always flatten that beam for you. All right. Uh, so that is uh, beaming. One final thing I'm going to show you is uh, flipping beams and stems. Now, in some cases, uh, you may want to just flip the beam upside down or something. And in, in this instance right here, uh, I can just show you real quick. Just L. The letter L will flip the beams the other way. All right. There's some more practical uses for it, like this following measure that's a little messy. I've got this uh, third layer set up as a Q, I guess, for a flute or something, right? If we hit, if we're in the third layer and we press L on all these notes, now those beams will get uh, will will get frozen up. Um, same thing down here. We could uh, we could flip this the other way if we want. All right. Um, so that's flipping stems and beams, and the keystroke for that is L. And um, I think that covers it. That's a lot of information about how to manipulate notes and rests in Finale's speedy entry. And as you can see, once you kind of understand how this stuff works and get used to it, it can be v a very powerful tool for you. So uh, there you go. I hope this has helped. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.